Welcome to my garage. John Reynolds here. I'm going to start doing some videos on basic fabrication and we're going to start uh, kind of from the beginning just just cutting and drilling and real basic stuff. So the first thing to think about is what kind of metal you want to use and I prefer to use cold rolled steel which is this shiny stuff. This is cold rolled. It has nice crisp edges. This is all cold rolled. So it welds nice. This is called hot plate and it's got this mill scale on it like this. And uh, it's just nasty to weld so I don't use it for anything unless, unless something around the, the barn needs fixing or mending. But for that, for car parts, I like to use cold rolled steel. So <clears throat> what we're gonna do is make a four inch square with four holes and a dimple die just to be fancy. So the first thing is we're gonna mark the, mark the four inch square. By the way, I like blue Sharpies other, more than black Sharpies because they tend to dry out less. And I like the ones with the double tip. So one tip is real fine and the other one's coarse. Now you use this as whenever you can, but sometimes you, you know, I don't know if the straight, this is perfectly straight, so I just measure everything. So to make our center hole for the dimple die, we're going to make, make it in the center. And you don't have to draw it all the way across, just make it in the center. All right, now for the holes, we're gonna do four different size holes. And the way I like to do it is start with all your hardware, know what kind of hardware you're gonna use. And we're gonna say we're gonna use four different size fasteners here. And they're gonna go in the corners. So the next thing is I use, I have these round templates. I like to use those for radiuses and various things. So we'll start out with a quarter inch and we want, to, we want to have some edge around the quarter inch washer, so we'll find out. We'll use the appropriate hole for that. Okay, there's the quarter inch. This is the three eighths. The three eighths, I think it's gonna be this size, yeah. And the final one's a half inch bolt. Let's see if this is the right. Yeah, that's right. All right. Now, to get the center of the hole, you can, you can measure and get it nuts on, but if it's just a visual thing and we're just con concerned about how it looks visually, then I cheat and I use this eyeball engineering method. So we centered up so it looks centered in there. And then we drop a dot right in the middle. And then finally the quarter inch, which is this size. I know this stuff takes a little time, but if you, if you want it to, to not look all crappy, that's <laughs> what it takes. All right, so now we have our four little dots. The next thing is to Start with an automatic punch. If you don't have earplugs, invest in them because you may be tough, but your ears aren't. So I usually wear them all the time when I'm in the shop. And use your thumb to guide it instead of trying to poke it. Use your thumb to guide it.
okay? Now, generally those aren't deep enough, so I take a center punch and make them deeper. And you want to make double sure your drill bit's not walking around. Use a blunt punch. That was a nice give it to follow. And for this center hole, we need to do that. All right, so what do we do now? Do we cut it? No, we drill it. The next thing is to drill it. And the reason we drill it next is because we have this built-in handle, the built-in lever, so we don't have to clamp it down. Now I know you should clamp it down, and sometimes I have to, but a lot of times to speed up the process, I don't clamp it down and I just leave it all attached to something like a lever like this. So that was quarter inch, three eighths, 12 millimeter and half inch. I use a step drill pretty much for everything because number one, it drills a, a nice round hole as opposed to using a regular drill bit, which oftentimes will use this tripoid thing. If you clamp it down, it, it tends not to do that as much, but if you're not clamping it down, they make this kind of triangular shape and it's ugly. Plus these, deep, these uh, put a chamfer uh, in the hole automatically and um, they're a little faster easily, so. Now, prop this like that, keep them spinning. The first hole is 3 sixteenths. Next one is 4 inch. And it just leaves a nice tramp chamfer. Go around the back side. Chamfer a little bit. This one is three eighths. Last one is half inch. Okay, now we want to drill this hole for the for the dimple die. And there's, this is the hole cutter I use, but there's some, these, these kind of also work fine. These, these uh, carbide tip ones are a little bit more accurate. I bought this drill press when I was 16 years old. It was a cheap Chinese one, and I'm 61 now, still using it. By the way, drill presses, what you need with a drill press, it, it's, you just need it to run slow. You need a slow, to be geared slow enough. So if, when you start cutting big holes, you can uh, slow it down because a little more controlled and the bits last longer. So we'll slow this all the way down to drill this bigger hole. We need a backing plate for it. way you can clean up these holes is these are called deburring tools and they take the burrs off this one is for inside if you 
want to deburr the inside of the hole. Same purpose. Several ways you can cut it. You can use a plasma torch. I, I don't even own one, so I don't use those, but another alternative is, is just a forage grinder with what I call a skinny wheel, the cutoff wheel. And you can clamp it down and cut it. But since I have a bandsaw, that's pretty much primarily what I use if I can fit it in the bandsaw. Now, since I, I always keep a skinny blade in the bandsaw, seems like when I put a wider half inch blade in there, I gotta cut radiuses. So I just keep a skinny one in there and just press a little less harder. Now I could have I could have cut it like this and you know cut those corners off, but I want to show you how I deal with making these corners nice and nice and uh, even looking. And These are the disc sanders and sanding equipment I use, but anything will work. So, we want to cut the flat first at a 45, all the flats. The next step we'll do to make our fancy dimple die or flared hole die as they called that's what these are and for you those that don't know that's you can see how they work they come in all different sizes so you need a harbor freight 20 ton press or better and just line it up It follows the die, and you can see it tacoing. That's natural. And when you get down to the end, you want to push it hard, but don't overdo it because you'll start leaving tool marks. It'll press it so hard. So now we got this thing, which is all nice and tacoed. So to correct that. We just flip the die back over the female part. Center it in the hole if you can. And 
once again put pressure on it but don't overdo it because you'll leave tool marks Let's see if that's enough yeah that's it Where's our 12 millimeter bolt? And that's it. So uh, the, the reason People use dimple dies is, well, they look beautiful, obviously, they look trick. But the main reason is because they add dimension this way. See, it adds a thickness, and that tends to make it less um, vulnerable to bending this way. So it, it not, not only looks nice, but it adds thickness for strength, and you lose a little bit of weight. That's the kind of purpose for it, although I think it's highly overused.